All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to do a few examples finding extreme values for functions. Um, now, there is a, there's a theorem here. There's the extreme value theorem, right? Just like there is in Calc 1. So extreme value theorem says that um, if f is continuous on some closed bounded domain um, D. And, and this is valid, by the way, for any number of variables. Um, F has to be a real valued function because we want to talk about max min values, right? So the output has to be a number so that we can compare whether those numbers are bigger or smaller. But if f is continuous on a closed bounded region d, then f has an absolute max and it has an absolute min at some points in, in D, right? So you're guaranteed to be able to find some point in your domain where your function attains an absolute maximum, some other point in your domain where the function attains an absolute minimum, right? Um, just like in Calc 1, right? The only thing that changes between Calc 1 and Calc 4 is that in Calc 1 we talk about a closed interval, um, right? So in, in that context, Context closed means that you include the endpoints, right? Um, bounded just means, well, you have endpoints. The interval doesn't go off to infinity. Um, and in Calc 4, these words, they, they mean more or less the same thing. Bounded means your region doesn't go off to infinity, right? It means that you can, uh, you could take a sufficiently large disk or, or rectangle, let's say, and fit it over your region. And closed just means that all the points around the boundary of the region, all the boundary points in your region, they are part of that domain. So you're including all the boundary points, right? Um, we know that if you don't include the boundary points, you can have things like, uh, like vertical asymptotes, right? Your function might go off to infinity because you're dividing by zero. You want to avoid things like that. Okay, so um, if we wanted to find, let's say, absolute maximum and minimum values for this particular function, well, you can, you can see that you're certainly not going to find a maximum value if we don't put any kind of constraints here because these, these degree four terms certainly mean that as x or y get sufficiently large, uh, this thing's going to go off to infinity, right? Um, so we got to deal with, with that. Um, now, I guess even, even if you don't place any restrictions on, on domain, you probably can find an absolute minimum value for this function if you just kind of, well, if you think about it for a bit, and we're not going to maybe get into this, but um, these terms here are always going to dominate and they're always positive, right? So for large values of either x or y or both, whether positive or negative, large values, um, these terms are always going to be much bigger than this one, right? So the function is going to be positive, right? So there would be some region closer to the origin where you would find that minimum value. And that means that that minimum value, whichever it happens to be, it must be at one of these critical points. Um, chances are, given that we've already gone through and, and classified these critical points, right, and we found that um, we had a saddle point at zero, zero. Um, I think I copied this down wrong. I think both of them were minimum values, weren't they? All right? I think they were both local minimum values. Um, and we may, in fact, want to find the values for those points, right? So at 0, 0, we get 1, right? At 1, 1, we get 1 plus 1, plus 1 more, but minus 4, so we get minus 1, okay? And, well, actually, if you put in x and y both equal to minus 1, uh, yeah, you also get minus one there. All right, yeah. I don't know why I wrote down maximum there. They definitely were both minimum when we, uh, when we worked that out a couple of videos back. 
Okay, um, so we can be pretty sure that this minus one is in fact the absolute minimum value, right? It's, it's certainly a local minimum value. And, and then we can kind of think about, you know, what happens when X gets really big, we can, we can work that out. Um, but if we, if we want something that we can sort of, you know, solve with some degree of certainty, right, the, the certainty that's given to us by the extreme value theorem, um, well, then we should, we should probably give ourselves a region. Um, so let's say we want to do, let's do a rectangle. So let's do the rectangle. Well, let's say we do this rectangle. 0, 2 times 0, 3, right? Uh, so this, this, by the way, this is Cartesian product notation. This just means that um, x is between 0 and 2, and y, oops, y is between 0 and 3. So that region, if you were going to draw it, right, what does our region look like? Our region is, well, x runs from, from 0 to 2, y runs from 0 to 3. So that's our region D. Okay? Now, one of the things that you'll notice, we can, uh, we can plot these critical points that we have. Right, so there's two points that we've already checked. Um, one of them's on the boundary, right? Zero, zero. Another one is right here on the inside. Okay, one, one. This other critical point here, it's not in our region, so we don't bother looking at it, right? It's just like in Calc 1, if you had one critical point that was outside your interval, you, you throw it away, you don't bother to look at it, okay? So we have these two values here, the one, the minus one, and we wanna figure out if, um, if is, is this actually the maximum? Is that actually the minimum? Or, or might there be some other values, right? So once you've dealt with the critical points, where else might a maximum occur? Well, the only, just like in Calc 1, the only other place where a maximum or a minimum might occur if it's not, you know, if it's in the interior, it has to be at a critical point. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a boundary maximum, okay? It's going to be a, a max or a min that happens somewhere on the boundary, okay? And so the next step, if we want to figure out where the max and min values are, is to work our way through the boundary. Uh, now. We have a rectangle, the boundary consists of four pieces, okay? So piece number one is going to be the bottom of the rectangle. Y is equal to zero, and X is gonna be between zero and two. So if we're only looking at points along the bottom of the rectangle, Y is equal to zero, that means that we can just put F of X zero in. And, well, what do we get if we put y equal to zero? Uh, this term goes away, this term goes away. We get x to the 4 plus 1, okay? Function of one variable. So how do you find the maximum for a function of one variable? Well, this is now a calc 1 problem, right? Um, we got to check our endpoints. f of 0, 0, we've already checked. We know that f of 0, 0 is 1. Um, we check also f of 2, 0. 2 to the 4 plus 1, we get 17. Uh, the other thing we might do is maybe if we, you know, maybe we should call this thing, let's say, say g of x, just so we can use kind of calc 1 notation, prime notation. g prime of x is 4x cubed. And so if we were looking for, uh, for a critical point, if we're treating this as a Calc 1 problem, um, well, the only place where it's equal to 0 is when, when x equals 0, and we've already dealt with that point, okay? So we've got some candidates. All right, which part of the rectangle should we do next? Um, why don't we just 
work our way around um, going counterclockwise. So the next one we'll do is going to be, we're going to set x equal to 2, and we're going to let y run from 0 to 3. So f of, and maybe let me call this, since we're going to have to do this four times, let's call this g1. Okay, wait round out of letters, at least letters that we like to use for functions. Um, so we're going to do f of 2y. So f of 2y, we're going to put x equal to 2. Uh, we're going to get 16 plus that 1, so 17, plus y to the 4, x is equal to 2, minus 8y. Let's call that We'll call that g2, but of course it's a function of y. Okay. So once again, if you want to figure out where this is either a max or a min, we've got to look at the endpoints of our interval, and we've got to look for critical points. So let's see. f at 2, 0. Well, we've already done that one, right? 17. f at 2, 3. Um, and, and by the way, just kind of, you probably can already guess that this is going to be the absolute maximum because, I mean, look at these two terms, right? The way you're going to make this thing as big as possible is choose the biggest available x value, or biggest available values for both x and y. So, yeah, we, we kind of already know this is going to be the max, but let's go through the motions anyway. Um, 3 to the 4 is, is 81. So this is 17 plus 81. Minus, uh, minus 24, okay? Um, so that is going to be what, 70, I wanna say 74. That doesn't seem right though. Let's see. So 98 minus 20, that is 74. Okay, cool. All right, 74. And g2 prime of y, what do we get? We get 4y cubed minus 8. Oh, this time we're actually going to get some critical points, right? We're going to get 4 times y cubed minus 2. Um, and this is equal to 0 when y is equal to the cube root of 2. Ha! So, one more point to check. f at 2 and the cube root of 2. Sounds like fun, right? What do we get there? Uh, we're going to get 17. Uh, the cube root of 2. Oh, God, right? Okay, this isn't so great, so much fun, but let's see. 2 to the 4 thirds um, minus uh, 8 times 2 to the oops, to the one third. That's what we're going to get there. Um, so I guess we, you know, we could pull out our calculators. We could figure out what this number is, but um, it's going to be bigger than one. It's going to be smaller than seventy-four. So I don't think we got to worry about it. Do we want? I don't want to worry about it. Let's not worry about it. Okay, we'll leave that one alone. Next piece of the boundary top of the rectangle. So y is going to be held constant at 3. x is going to run from 0 to 2. So we're going to do f at x and 3. And that's going to look like it's going to be x to the 4. It's going to be 81 plus 1 more. Minus 12x. x to the 4 minus 12x plus 81, plus 1, okay, so 82. All right. Um, now, we can uh, go ahead and uh, let's, uh, let's call this thing G3, okay? And we can do our sort of checking that we've done, right? So we check the endpoints, 0 and 2. So F at 0, Three. Uh, that's one corner of the rectangle we haven't checked right. Um, so if x is 0, y is 3, 
we get uh, we get 82. All right. Ah, interesting. Our, our intuition was maybe wrong. 74 is not going to be the max because we still have this term coming in. Yeah. 82 is bigger than 74. Good, good, good. All right. F at 2, 3. Well, we worked that one out already. That's 74. Okay. And we got to look for critical points. Might as well, right? Keep ourselves honest. Make sure we don't miss something. What's G3 prime? G3 prime is going to be 4x cubed minus 12. So 4 times x cubed minus 3. And that's going to be equal to 0 if x is the cube root of 3. Ha! Okay. I don't think I want to plug that one in. Do we want to work that one out? Cube root of 3, what do we think we're going to get? Is it going to give us something that's... Uh, oh, it's going to be bigger, yeah? Yeah, it's going to be bigger, I think. Let's check. We're running out of space. Let's put it down over here. And then we still got one more piece to do, right? Um, actually, let's do that piece down here. So we've got to look at what about f at cube root of 3 and 3. We're going to get um, 3 to the power 4. Oh, it's not going to be bigger. What am I talking about? Minus 12 times uh, 3 to the 1 over 3. Um, plus the 82 that we already had. Now, 3 to the 4 over 3, that's 3 times the cube root of 3, right? So this is 3 times 3 to the 1 third minus 12 times 3 to the 1 third plus our 82. Um, so this is, it's 82 minus 9 times 3 to the 1 third. So certainly it's less than 82. Still bigger than 1. Yeah? Okay. Well, just to make sure we haven't missed anything, let's do the last piece of our boundary. And then we'll be done. So the last piece of the boundary is when... Um, well, y is going to be... y is going to run from 0 to 3. x is going to be equal to 0, right? We've got this piece here. x is 0. Um, so f at 0... Y is, um, oh, it's constant. It's just 1. Plus Y to the 4. Ha! 1 plus Y to the 4. Um, right? And so that's pretty much the same thing as we did over here, except we have X instead of Y. Okay? So G, let's say 4 of Y is, is this. And that's g4 of y. And again, we just have to check the endpoints because we know the only critical point is at the origin, which is already accounted for. Um, but the endpoints are points we've already done, right? We've done, if y is equal to 0, we're at the origin. If y is equal to 3, we're up here. And we dealt with that point uh, in the previous case. Um, so we actually don't have anything more to check, right? So now we go through and we look and we say, OK, we're looking for a max. We're looking for a min. Um, where is the minimum value? Ah. This local minimum is also the absolute minimum. Where is the absolute maximum value? It's this one here. OK. So a lot of work when your boundary has more than one piece, right? So this would be a what we might call a piecewise smooth boundary, right? Because it has some corners. We're joining together smooth curves to make the boundary. It's a lot easier if your boundary is given by a single kind of smooth curve with no corners on it, then you don't have to break things up like this. You can, uh, you can simplify a little bit. But if your boundary has corners, you got to break it up into steps like this. So, you know, it's straightforward, but it's a little tedious, okay? Uh, we'll do one more example in the next video.